The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today for God's Word. Read, hear, and learn the Bible. We read eight chapters every day, four from the New Testament, four for the Old. All the information there is in the description below. Today, we have, right now, we have the four chapters from the Old Testament. We are in um, Genesis, the 13th chapter, 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter, Psalm 9, and the 13th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. So let's begin with the 13th chapter of Genesis. So Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him into the Negev. Now Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. And he journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been placed at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abram called upon the name of the Lord, and Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, there will, there will be no strife between you and me and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. It is not the whole land, is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left land hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, in the direction of Zorah. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land that you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. And next, 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter. Saul was blank years old when he began to reign, and he reigned blank in two years over Israel. Saul chose 3,000 men of Israel. 2,000 were Saul and Michmash in the hill country of Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan and Gilbia of Benjamin. The rest of the people he sent home, every man to his tent. Jonathan defeated, Jonathan defeated the garrison of the Philistines that was at Geba, and the Philistines heard of it, and Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard it and said that Saul had defeated the garrison of the Philistines and also that Israel had become a stench to the Philistines. And the people were called out to join Saul at Gilgal. And the Philistines mustered to fight with Israel 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and troops like the sand on the seashore and the multitude. They came up and encamped in Michmash to the east of beth Evan. When the men of Israel saw that they were in trouble, for the people were hard-pressed, the people hid themselves in the caves and in holes and in rocks and in tombs and in cisterns, and some Hebrews crossed the fords of the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul was still at Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. He waited seven days, the time appointed by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattering from him. So Saul said, Bring the burnt offering here to me, and the peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him and greet him. Samuel said, What have you done? 
And Saul said, When I saw that the people were scattering from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines had mustered at Mishmash, I said, Now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal. And I have not sought the favor of the Lord. So I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God with which he commanded you. For then the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be prince over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. And Samuel arose and went up from Gilgal. The rest of the peoples went up after Saul to meet the army. Then they went up from Gilgal to Geba, to Geba of the Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people who were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, and the people who were present with them, stayed in Geba of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped at Michmash. And raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned toward Oprah, to the land of Shewa. Another company turned toward Beth Horan. And another company turned toward the border that looks down on the valley of Zeblum, toward the wilderness. Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make themselves swords or spears. But every one of the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen his plowshare, his mattocks, his axe, or his sickle. And the charge was two-thirds of a shekel. For the plowshares and for the mattocks, and a third of a shekel for a sharpening of the axes and for setting the goads. So on the day of the battle there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any people with Saul and Jonathan. But Saul and Jonathan, his son, had them. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the pass of Michmash. And next we're in the Psalms, the ninth Psalm, Psalm 9. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before your presence. You have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You have made the wicked perish. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy came to an end in everlasting ruin. Their cities you rooted out. Their very memory of them has perished, but the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for justice, and he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with uprightness. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put your trust in the Lord, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord, who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See my affliction from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk in the pit that they have made in the net that they hid. Their own foot has been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall return to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are but men. And lastly, from the Old Testament, from our four lists today, our four chapters, we are in Isaiah, the 13th chapter. The oracle concerning Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos saw. On a bare hill, raise a signal, cry aloud to them, wave the hand for them to enter the gates of the nobles. I myself have commanded my consecrated ones, and I have summoned my mighty men to execute my anger. My proudly exalting ones, the sound of a tumult is on the mountains as of a great multitude, the sound of an uproar of kingdoms, of nations gathering together. The Lord of hosts is mustering a host for battle. 
They come from a distant land, from the end of the heavens. The Lord and the weapons of his indignation destroy the whole land. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near, as destruction from the Almighty it will come. Therefore all hands will be feeble, and every human heart will melt. They will not be, they will be dismayed. Pangs and agony will seize them. They will be in anguish like a woman in labor. They will look aghast at one another. Their faces will be aflame. Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with wrath and fierce anger to make the land a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay low the pompous pride of the ruthless. I will make people more rare than fine gold and mankind than the gold of Ophrah. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will be shaken out of its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger and like a hunted gazelle or like a sheep with none to gather them each will turn to his own people and each will flee to his own land whoever is found will be thrust through and whoever is caught will fall by the sword their infants will be dashed in pieces before their eyes their houses will be plundered and their wives ravished behold i am stirring up the meads against them who have no regard for silver and do not delight in gold their bows will slaughter the young men they will have no mercy on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not pity children. In Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the splendor and pomp of the Chaldeans will be like Sodom and Gomorrah when God overthrew them. It will never be inhabited or lived in for all generations. No Arab will pitch his tent there. No shepherds will make their flocks lie down there. But wild animals will lie down there, and their houses will be full of hollowing creatures. Their ostriches will dwell and their wild goats will dance. Hyenas will cry in its towers and jackals in the pleasant palaces. Its time is close at hand, and its days will not be prolonged. Amen. <laughs>